Hi, I'm Brian Carlstrom, Superintendent at Cape Cod National Seashore, and behind me is a restoration effort that is just getting underway. And the Chequesset Neck Dyke is in the process of transitioning to the Chequesset Neck Bridge. There's been some type of a tidal impoundment here all the way back to 1909, and that's where the trouble started. So the existing dike, which was built in the early 20th century, essentially is just an earthen dam across the Heron River. The existing culverts were roughly seven feet by seven feet, uh, box culverts, three of them in sequence. Two of those are one-way flap gates, which only allow the tide to recede. And then there's one sluice gate that does allow the tide to flood in. But these are severely restricting to historical tidal flows uh, that the Heron River has seen. Between Wellfleet Harbor and the water levels that occur in Wellfleet Harbor, which is the blue, anywhere from 12, you know, 10 to 14 feet tide range down to one to two feet. The current dike basically mutes that to what that red line is. So you have a massive restriction of the exchange of the water. And then if you go further up in the system, that tidal exchange of one to two feet becomes almost zero. The water quality is so poor coming out of this, it's actually been declared an impaired water quality resource by the state of Massachusetts under the Clean Water Act. So that's why we're putting so much effort into this. So our design approach for the permanent bridge is really modeled, you know, around, if you will, the hydraulic requirements for the project. So if you imagine this is the river bottom and this is the bridge deck, um, we allowed panels to be installed through the bridge deck and some of the panels have gates um, attached to them. We have two types of gates. Some of the gates are slide gates, in other words they just slide up and down and the other gate is, can slide up and down but it can also flap out. So when um, the river wants to drain out into Cape Cod Bay, the flap will allow that greater volume of water to drain out and then when the tide comes in, the flap closes and it restricts the incoming tide. And um, as we move through the restoration and these gates become incrementally uh, more and more open, then the next point to increase the hydraulic opening further would be to remove panels. There's also been a, a lot of community engagement in the process of design, particularly with respect to the bridge. Its overall design incorporates features that reflect community desires for additional enhanced access to the water. So we introduced some portage facilities that would allow kayakers or canoeists or take out on one side and put on, a, on the other. And we also developed a public access facility that's ADA accessible from Duck Harbor Road going down on a little path down to the landing on the riverside. It's going to be a real asset to the community. Not only does it open up recreational activities, um, not only does it improve rare species habitat, uh, improve shellfish, one of our largest industries that we have, but it also uh, fixes a, a, you know, a failing infrastructure. So if this project did not move forward, we didn't have funding from our federal and state partners, the town of Wellfleet would have been on the on you know the tab for rebuilding this infrastructure. We're hoping to learn from the mistakes of the past and, and really build something that's going to take the test of time. It's a tough environment in the winter. We got to make sure that whatever we build out there is is going to be able to withstand the elements. <laughs>